All right, time to do some triple integrals. Uh, the instructor model here says, use a triple integral to find the volume of the solid enclosed by the paraboloids. Y equals X squared plus C squared and Y equals 18 minus X squared minus C squared. So in general with triple integrals, you can uh, integrate a function of three variables over a three dimensional domain of integration, right? Defined by those three variables. Um, this is sort of a special case of that where we aren't given a function to f of x, y, z to integrate. Um, so if you're asked to use triple integral to find a volume, um, you're actually just integrating the function one, right? And the, you know, this triple integral here just turns into the triple integral over the region E, uh, dV, and that will give you the volume of that region E. Um, and so these equations we see, these paraboloids, right, those define the boundary of the region E. Um, uh, but, you know, a triple integral of a function, the setup will be very similar. It's just when we go to do the triple integral, instead of using one for the integrand, we would put in the function itself. Uh, and you'll see some examples of that as well. Um, all right, so I think the best thing to do is to try to graph the region E first and try to figure out what's going on with it. Um, we're going to go to GeoGebra for that and just type in the equations that define the boundaries. So we have these two paraboloids, y equals x squared plus c squared, and y equals 18 minus x squared minus c squared. All right, uh, let's change the color on one. So we can actually tell them apart. And then let's rotate it around and let's zoom out. We need to bring in the y axis a little here. Right. And that is it. We can now see this sort of creates a little capsule. And this is our region E, right? So we want to find the volume of that region. So let's just grab a little screenshot of it. And then you can put your screenshot in there. Um, are you, with the GeoGebra account, you can save it and then uh, click the little share button, give it a title, and then you'll get a, a link to it. So it says write equations for the surfaces that create the boundary of the region. And so sometimes you're just given... Uh, Sometimes you're given a bunch of restrictions. Sometimes they're just kind of mentioned in words, like it'll say above the X, Y plane or things like that. And so you don't always have all the equations explicit for the boundary. And this one we do. Um, and so what I like to do is view this as a region that has a surface that's the top and a surface that's the bottom. Um, I mean, you may also have surfaces on the sides, but we don't here. And so if we go back to this, you can see that it's the surfaces are kind of defined around the y-axis. Um, and so we'd want to 
rotate this thing like that. So the y-axis is pointing up. And then you can see that the top part uh, is the blue function. 18 minus x squared minus c squared. And the red, you think of that as the bottom. And that's y equals x squared plus z squared. So that when we do the integral, the first integral would be kind of integrating from the bottom surface to the top surface. Um, and then we can use those equations for that integration, right? So already I'm kind of thinking this is gonna be an integral from the bottom to the top. And it would be a y integral, right? That'll be our first inner integration. And then after that, we would have the dx stuff. Now, once you have those surfaces identified, you want to look for a combination of those um, that will describe the region for the remaining double integral, right? After you do the first integral and triple integral, you're left with a double integral. Um, and so, Can combine those. Um, I mean, here they're both y equals, and so you're able to just set them equal to each other, right? Kind of using substitution, substituting the expression for y from one equation into the other. And then you get an equation without y, uh, just x and z. So that'll be define our two-dimensional boundary for the double integral. Um, simplifying that, you can add x squared to both sides, add z squared to both sides, and then dividing by 2, uh, we see we get the equation of a circle centered at the origin radius 3. Uh, in the x, z plane. Now going back to this, that, that's the circle there. I uh, kind of have x the wrong way, but yeah. So you see uh, x on the horizontal and z on the vertical and you know, this circle here is a circle centered at the origin radius three, right? So that is x squared plus z squared equals three squared. So you might be thinking, well, couldn't you have just looked at the graph and saw that? I mean, I'd use the graph more to validate and kind of analytically determine this. Because how do I know that's exactly a radius of three or that it's exactly centered? Uh, um, so I would use the graph either before or after or both, but, but use the equations themselves to make sure that you get that 
uh, boundary defined with accuracy. All right, so if you're using the type system, Uh, that we talked about in the presentation, um, then you can identify the triple integral by the variable that is missing in this boundary. Then that'll also indicate the variable you'll integrate first. Um, and we've kind of already done that, right? Um, we were, were missing y. And so we will... integrate with respect to y first. So this will be a type two triple integral. All right, um, looking at, so I guess that tells you that you're doing dy first, right? If you didn't already know, and then dz dx or dx dz. And so in step five, we kind of figure out what would work best. And going back to, to this, if I am integrating this, Um, I could think of z as a function of x. I guess that's g2. Sort of the like type 2 double integral here. And since that's a circle, it would be 9 minus x squared and negative square root of 9 minus x squared. And then x goes from negative 3 to 3. So that after I do my y integral, you know, we could have this set up where we integrate x from negative 6 squared squared. Oh, that's DC, sorry. I'm grading Z second, and then X would be last. Um, but we've seen before that these functions are very difficult to integrate and that those are gonna get substituted in after you do the middle integral, the Z one, and then you'll have to deal with those in the x integral, right? So from double integrals, we know when we have a circle for our domain of integration, we want to shift to polar coordinates. Um, but I think we'll just do that later. Yeah. All right, so that was step five, We're looking at the region D, which is the domain of integration for the double integral that's left over. Um, if we can put all this stuff together and define the region E as a set. Remember, we, we said we were doing Y first, so we're doing type two. And then based on that, it looked like we would do um, Z second and then X last, which is a type two, type one. Right? And so,
We know y is between x squared plus c squared, the bottom, and 18 minus x squared minus c squared, the top. And then z is between square, negative square root of 9 minus x squared and positive 9 minus x squared. And then x was between negative 3 and 3. And this gives us our iterated triple integral. So we'd have got a y squared in there uh, accident. Uh, our function is just one because we're finding the volume. But there's our first integral. And then there's the second. And there's the third. All right, so we'll do that inner integral and then we'll probably switch over to polar coordinates. So we're just looking at this one. It's actually pretty easy, right? The antiderivative of one with respect to y is just y. And then using the fundamental theorem calculus, sort of evaluate that at the upper limit minus the lower limit. And then that simplifies to 18 minus 2x squared minus 2x squared. And so that takes care of that first inner integral. And we're now back to a double integral. Um, and so we've already talked about those in the other methodologies. Um, we either use the general regions for rectangular or polar coordinates. And we'll shift over to polar coordinates since we're integrating over a circle. So got the result from the inner integral, 18 minus 2x squared minus 2z squared. And then we'd be doing a z integration and then x integration, right? And so we didn't notice already, we'd see how complicated this looks. Again, looking back at the domain of integration being a circle and decide to switch over to polar coordinates, right? And then the polar coordinate equations would come up, uh, let's say x squared,
plus y squared equals z squared. Oh, wait, sorry. X squared plus y squared equals r squared. X equals r cosine theta. So r sine theta. But remember, that's all defined for the xy plane, right? And what we're dealing with is an xz plane. So you technically need to kind of redefine the polar coordinate system here. Uh, and I think the easiest way to do that is just let x stay the same and then let z stand in place for y. So x is still our cosine theta, but now z would be our sine theta. And you'd have x squared plus z squared equals r squared. And then, you know, looking at this disk, right, radius being three, right, and thinking about limits, like R is going to go from zero to three, and theta is going to go from zero to two pi to trace out that, that disk. So you're not really using those polar equations to try to like directly convert, just kind of thinking of how to describe that same region in polar coordinates, right? I mean, a, a disk like this is a polar rectangle. Um, however, for the, the integrand here, we do need to think about it that way. We need to convert X and Z to polar coordinates and factoring off a negative two, reveals that this could be written as 18 minus 2r squared. Remember that when we set up polar coordinates, we have an extra r that goes with our dr d theta. Um, and then integrating r first, go from 0 to 3 on the inner integral, and 0 to 2 pi on the outer integral. So hopefully watch the video on these double integrals and polar coordinates. Right? And then doing this inner integral, integral from zero to three, let's distribute the R. And so we get 18R minus two R cubed. And then our antiderivative would be nine R squared minus one half or fourth. And then when we evaluate at r equals three, we get nine times three squared minus one half three to the fourth uh, minus zero, right? Uh, three squared is nine, nine times nine is 81. 3 to the 4th is also 81. So 81 minus 81 halves is 81 halves. And then we still have the integral from 0 to 2 pi with respect to theta. Uh, and antiderivative would be 81 halves theta. 0 to 2 pi, and we just get 81 over 2 times 2 pi minus 0, that's 0, 2 is cancel, and so we get 81. All right, so 81 pi is our result. We're now ready for validation.
feel like we could do better than what's here. A nice list of validations in the last one. So we can differentiate to check antiderivatives. Can use technology to compute the integral. And we can estimate with the volume E times the average value. So the triple integral here is a volume, but in general, the result of triple integral is more equivalent to the volume of the region E you're integrating over uh, with the average value of the function, right? You're, you're looking at the value of function over a three-dimensional region. Our function is just one, and so it is the volume here, but that's not usually the case. Um, so we can actually check this by just finding the volume, and then the average value will be one, and so it'll match up. Um, we can do that now. So... I want to try to think of a shape that this matches up with. And closest thing I could think of is a, an ellipsoid. Um, so that's just an oblong sphere. And you know, an ellipsoid is going to be more rounded, right? Like this. But if you remember, the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. The ellipsoid just, instead of having the radius be the same in all three dimensions, it, it gives you kind of three separate radii type like values. And so we just need to kind of identify those three radii. And it shouldn't be too hard. So again, this, this is 18, and that's nine. And so Volume is four thirds pi A, B, C. Usually A is in the X direction, B is in the Y direction, and C is in the Z direction. So we'll stick with that. So this is B equals nine. And then in the X direction, you can see we go out to three. And in the Z direction, which is kind of coming in and out of the screen, um, C is also equal to three. Um, remember when we looked at the XC plane, it was a circle. And so we do have A and C kind of matching up. All right, so nine times three times three. Um, these cancel, and that's 27 times 4 times pi. So 27 times 4, we get 108 pi. We're comparing that with 81 pi. Not bad. Kind of overestimates it because of the actual ellipsoid would be more rounded, it would be slimmer.
but you know, those both round to a hundred pi, right? So that's one way of doing that. Again, if they had a function you're integrating, right? You need to take this volume of the region E and then multiply it by the average value of the function over that. And so pick some point that you think is representative of the average of the average value of the function. You could use a centroid or something else. Uh, evaluate the function there and then multiply by that. We would just be multiplying by one here. Um, you know, looking at our antiderivatives, we still have access to all those. That's too many clicks back. So we will reproduce. The first integral we did was just dy, and we just got y. So hard to mess that one up. Our next integration was with R, right? It was 18R minus R cubed. Uh, there was a two here. This is one half. So then we check that with an R integration. Well, we get eighteen R minus. So it checks out. Uh, and then the last one was also pretty trivial, right? It was 81 over 2 to theta. So these integrations didn't leave a lot of room to make a mistake. Um, but demonstrating the technique for when you have more complicated integrations to do. All right, and the last up is the technology we're going to use Python to validate. Here's some code for a Triple integral. So I'm going to keep it in rectangular coordinates just to kind of test out some of the conversions I did, validate those as well. Uh, our function is just one here. I didn't do the nested sim.integrate commands because it just debits to be too much, but we do start by integrating f, and we did a y integration first, and it was from x squared plus z squared to 18 minus x squared minus z x squared. Right, and then we'll take that and integrate z from negative sim dot square root nine minus x squared to positive sim dot square root nine minus x squared, and then x integration last from negative three to three.
Right, so it's saying there's an error in this line of code. Probably means I made a mistake in the previous line of code. Yeah, mismatch parentheses. So that one needs a, a buddy. And I might chug a little bit here because we didn't convert to polar coordinates. So it's doing the those square roots the hard way. Let's see if it can actually come up with it. Came out with negative 81 pi over 2. Which doesn't match up with our results. So I guess I'll have to look into that. I don't think I made a mistake. Made a mistake in this coding, maybe. Uh, well, so the problem has to find the volume, even if we came up with a negative value here, we would need to take the absolute value for the volume. Um, let me see if I can find any mistakes here. All right, so I I did switch over to, well, do using Python to follow through what we we did analytically and let's do the y integration in rectangular coordinates that matches up with what we had 18 minus 2 r squared um, and then switched over to code that just uses polar coordinates um, and integrated r dr d theta r from 0 to 3 theta from 0 to 2 pi and we get the same result 81 pi um and then I went back to check just what's going on here. And then I wasn't even getting results. So it, and now it won't give me anything. Um, so it's it's trying to go through and integrate this symbolically. And I think it's just having a hard time. I'm not sure where that negative 81 pi over two came from. Um, and I don't think that can be trusted. So, um, you know, based on, so it could be that we need to adjust from just the net sign change volume form of the integral to just a, a pure volume. And it's getting confused by that. And based on our other validations, I think specifically looking at the volume of the shape that we have the right thing, 81 pi over two would be too far off. Um, thing. So I'll wrap it up like that and I guess make a correction video if I can figure that out. But if you could let me know um, what you think about that 81 pi over two results, uh, or think I made a mistake, let me know. Um, otherwise we are done with triple integrals. Uh, for rectangular coordinates, we wanna look at next uh, triple integrals with cylindrical and spherical coordinates. This was kind of a cylindrical coordinate problem.